So we've already talked so much about season four of The Dragon Prince with my reviews, my reactions, and so much more, but today I thought let's take a look at every episode and rank them from worst to best. And you might be surprised at which one is my number one. What's going on you guys? James here with another real ranking and today we're going to look at my favorite episodes of The Dragon Prince Season 4. Now we're going to go from worst to best. You guys probably already have your list so I need to see those down below in the comments. And hey before we get started, if it's your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James where I absolutely love talking about movies, TV, and all the news in between. So if you do too, hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel you guys. Hit the thumbs up button again if you're a big fan of The Dragon Prince and tap on that bell so you don't miss out on my next Next Dragon Prince video, which is going to be me ranking every single character in season four. I want Rayla to be number one, but that might not happen. Alrighty, y'all. Well, you know what? Let's waste no more time. You guys need no introduction for the Dragon Prince. We already know it was a nine episode season. Very similar, of course, exactly the same to seasons one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and get into it, beginning with number nine, what I think is the worst episode of season four. And that is our season four premiere, episode one, Rebirthday. This is an episode that really didn't have the most fair shot at being one of the best episodes this season. And that's simply because we've seen pretty much the entire episode in clips and first looks before the season premiered. And we actually got the entire episode before season four dropped. So this episode really had no shot at being one of the better episodes this season. And I will say there were some really good elements towards the end of episode one that made it more enjoyable. However, I just don't necessarily know if it was so smart to release episode one a whole, what, 24 hours early? Just because of the fact that I, I don't necessarily think this is a good episode. It's not a good start to the season. Season 4 as a whole, and I said it in my review, had probably the slowest start to any season in the Dragon Prince so far. So yeah, episode 1 Rebirthday, not great. We got Callum and Ezrin having their moment together, and that was sweet, very sincere, but it just took a little too long to get there. But that's besides the point. We're going to get into number 8, and that is episode 2, Fallen Stars. Yeah, like I mentioned, the first three episodes of season four were just not very solid here, but I will say at least Fallen Stars had a little bit more oomph, and we got Rayla. There was also a little bit of foreshadowing as to what this season could entail, because Callum translated the runic symbols around Erevos' mirror, and we got to understand it said, in darkness, look to a fallen star, and then, well, Rayla came into the scene which i really loved and this is around the time where i understood okay veer and claudia and terry are gonna have their own subplot and their own adventure so it was really cool to figure out a little bit more about that mystery uh but yeah episode two just not necessarily strong enough to get past the number eight spot but you know what it's time for number seven and that goes to episode five the great gates I did enjoy this episode simply for the fact that it reminded me of the Dragon Prince of old. That Drakewood moment where they're in the forest together, it's Soren, Callum, and the gang. It just felt pretty darn good. Of course, it didn't feel great when Soren got captured by the Earth Blood Elves, even though Rayla told him to just keep following her. That's besides the point. I'm just really happy we got an episode like this because even though I won't say it's one of the strongest episodes, even though it's at the bottom of my list, it's still pretty darn decent. It was a nice little stepping stone into the next act of season four. And we got some more of Sir Sparklepuff, which is Erebus's messenger. Just a creepy creature, and I don't want anything to do with it. Seriously, just keep it away. I feel like it just would be like a slimy creature. Alrighty, let's move on to number six, and that is episode seven beneath the surface. Now you're probably wondering why is this episode ranked so low? And that's not simply because it is a bad episode, it's just that this is where we're starting to get into the better episodes of season 4 where they're more well-rounded and there is sort of a sense of stakes at play. There's an emotional weight and you do feel a lot of that in episode 7. The cave scenes are just awesome here. The actual animation looks beautiful. Now, I still have an issue with how stiff the facial animations were this season. I don't necessarily like the new direction that they went in with the art style for season four, but it was just beautiful. That sense of adventure was so strong in this episode. And this is a prime example of how season four did a good job at interconnecting writing and all of the storylines up to this point. We know Soren was cornered by Claudia Viren, 
Sir Sparkle Puff and Terry, and then you have Rayla and Callum with their little rift, and Callum couldn't let go of the key of Erebus. So there was a lot going on in this episode, but it felt very concise, and I did enjoy the pace. But like I said, there are episodes in season four that just outdo it by a little bit more. So let's get into my top five now with number five, and that is episode six, The Drakewood. Funny that this episode is titled The Drakewood when it could have been titled anything to do with Amaya or Janai because that's what this episode was about. The C plot was strong here with the Sunfire Elves and the human conflict. I do really like the tribunal scene as well. It just, for me, felt like this was an effective plot. A lot of you had said in the comments that they had, could have just done away with as much of a focus because it felt out of place. But in my opinion, this was a nice little departure from the main plot, right? We needed something like this to let us know that Catullus is still not in a good way. And we had learned that Prince Kareem was setting up a coup, and that is terrible because what is you doing, boy? But it really just set up for a strong final act in season four. I mean, of course we got moments in the Drakewood, but to me, episode six was all about Janai and Amaya, so fans of that couple probably were really happy with this episode. But you know which episode I was even happier with? The episode that's coming in at number four, and that is episode eight, Rex Igneous. Guys, when we were predicting what these titles could mean for season four, I thought Rex Igneous' episode was gonna be all about his backstory, but instead, it was more so about present time with Rex Igneous, Callum, and the gang. And this really was a master showcase in Ben Cotton's voice work for Rex Igneous. Meeting Rex, this larger-than-life archdragon, was awesome, and learning that he had the map of Erebus' secret prison in his tooth was a cool little setup. And we did just speak about pacing in these episodes, but to me, this was the most well-paced episode of the season. And usually penultimate episodes ahead of the season finales are supposed to be very good at setting up what should be a strong final episode. And let me tell you guys, episode eight did just that. Yeah, this is one episode that when I do have my rewatch of season four, I'm gonna really enjoy watching y'all, but surprisingly that is not one of the best episodes because we still got my top three beginning with number three, and that is episode three. <laughs> breathtaking. Now at this point in the season I even have my notes here, I wrote down best episode yet and I meant it because the fight between Claudia and Ibis was beautifully cut and spliced between King Ezrin's speech with Zubeya Zim and to his people of Catullus and I really loved how they were able to just weave in and out of his little uh, monologue in a way and it just really worked for me of course super surprising that terry was the one to kill ibis but this was what i thought was going to set up for probably the strongest season yet now that's not the case but episode three definitely gave me that hope the dialogue was much smoother here and the animation during the action was crisp i also really loved frederick weedman's score it was incredible during ibis's death scene rest in peace to our boy ibis but the mature tone here was what really set it apart from the previous two episodes. And then of course we understood a little bit more about Callum being upset at Rayla, so you know, there was a little bit of division with Raylum there, but yeah, episode three was just fantastic. But it, again, it's not the best, so let's get into the top two, y'all. Beginning with episode nine at the number two spot, Escape from Umber Tor. The season four finale was incredibly strong. There was a lot happening, but it felt very well constructed. I wanna start with with Rayla learning of her parents trapped in the coins and Runan and Claudia faking her out and Terry being the one to tell Claudia go back there and make it right. So I really enjoyed that aside, but then you have everything happening with Viren getting his staff and then of course them getting the map of Erebos' secret prison. It sets up for season five very nicely. And then we get a Soren moment with him and the gang just encouraging them to push the doors open so they literally don't die by Rex Igneous. And Zubia gets her moment to shine as well in the finale. So there was a lot going on but it all made sense to me, and it was probably the strongest season finale yet outside of season three in The Dragon Prince. Oh, and we got a Raylum moment, you know, the hug. So I will take that because we didn't get anything else this season. Now, could they have done a better job at explaining Rayla's disappearance? I do think so, but 
you know, maybe they'll get into that in season five. I do think the ship has sailed for that, though. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go and, you know, find other contextual clues as to why she disappeared. I know a lot of you said read the graphic novel, which I definitely understand. Those are important. But the producers told us we didn't have to read external sources to understand why she disappeared. And in season four, unfortunately, they didn't really come through with that promise. That was my only gripe with the season finale. However, I really enjoyed episode nine, but it ain't the best, y'all, because we got the number one episode of season four that's right my favorite episode of season four and that is episode four through the looking glass it's no coincidence that the best episode this season has to deal with erevos and his only appearance really in season four now i'm not counting the flashbacks but i am counting present day only and through the looking glass was an incredible episode that felt really dark you know there was a sense of dread when Erevos took over Callum and Callum was going and reading everyone like a book and it was incredible but yeah Callum to me is gonna be the one character I think in season five that will probably get hurt by Erevos the most because now Erevos knows he can control Callum and that is not great but it was an incredible episode very well written well paced and the ending was solid and while the editing was a little bit uneven in the beginning where they were cutting back and forth between the Sunfire Elves, the Human Conflict, and then Erevos, it still made sense by the end. Heck, we even get Erevos' backstory here, so just a lot that was going on, but this was the most enjoyable episode of the season for me. So there you have it, guys. That is my real ranking of all of the episodes in Season 4 of The Dragon Prince. In case you skip to the end, which, shame on you, let's go ahead and recap. Coming in at number 9 is episode 1, coming in at number 8 is episode 2, at the number 7 spot is episode 5, at number 6 is episode 7, number 5 is episode 6, and in the top 4 beginning with number 4 is episode 8, then you have my top 3 beginning with number 3, episode 3, it's a lot of 3's, and in my top 2, at number 2 is episode 9, the season 4 finale, and my favorite episode of season 4 is episode four through the looking glass but guys i want to know your ranking down below so go ahead and drop your list and let me know why each episode is where it's at that would be really cool i'm curious to hear your reasoning and we'll talk about it in the comments and hey if you haven't already by this point hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel join the real family for more reviews reactions and videos just like this and hit the thumbs up button again if you enjoyed this video and all the dragon prince coverage so far i'll be keeping my ears to the ground for any season five tidbits and maybe things we can talk about on the channel but for now we got one more video coming that i know of for season four and that is ranking every single character in this season from worst to best just like we did here with my episodes ranking Alrighty, y'all again thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you at the next screening and um boy i think callum's gonna be a little upset that i have his birthday episode at the bottom don't hurt me bro